Welcome guys and girls. Today we are going to go over one of the most popular interview topic as well as real world question. How do you secure your S3 bucket? Remember, you must delight the interviewer and not meet. In today's video, I'm going to go over some of the average answer I hear and a delightful answer and also I'll explain why they are delightful and I'll also show you a short demo at the end. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Raj. Currently, I'm a founder at the Stealth EdTech startup. And before that, I was a principal solutions architect at AWS and distinguished cloud architect at Verizon. But more importantly, I mentored many of my students to get top tech jobs in AWS, JP Morgan Chase, Microsoft, Google, Reddit, CoreWeave, and more. And I taught them the same principle and same concepts that I'm going to reveal today. All right, let's get started. So the question is, how do you secure your S3 bucket? The average answer I hear is, I will use KMS so the bucket objects are not unencrypted. Sometimes you add, I will use IAM roles and bucket policy for least privilege. These are average answers. Why are these average? Because they are very generic surface level answer. As a solutions architect, you need to demonstrate that you understand different security vulnerabilities and how to fix them. Also, there is one kind of wrong answer in the average answer. And I'm going to reveal that. So keep watching and I'll go over it in the delightful answer. So when it comes to securing S3 buckets, there are different aspects of it. So let's go over them one by one. So the first of all, your bucket objects can be accessed anonymously from internet. We do not want that. How do you prevent that? You turn on block public access on your S3 bucket. All right. So you blocked anonymous access, but at this point, any authenticated AWS user can access your bucket. How do you stop that? You do that by enforcing bucket policy. So in production, not any user can go to your bucket and read sensitive information. That information can only be read from AWS services running your application. All right, so let's talk about the AWS application. Let's say your application is running in EC2. Now, how do you give access to this bucket? You attach IAM role to these EC2s. Now, you don't want to give a broad role so that this application running inside EC2 can go read any S3 bucket in your account. For that reason, you specifically attach the IAM role with the name of this S3 bucket. That's all good, but this EC2 will be running inside a VPC. And when your EC2 or your Lambda um, which is running in a subnet, is trying to access your S3 bucket, the traffic will traverse via internet. That is definitely not good because then it is susceptible to man in the middle attack. How do you stop that? So then you attach a VPC endpoint to your VPC and the application running inside EC2 uses this VPC endpoint to talk to this S3 so no traffic traverses through internet. And sometimes candidates give this wrong answer that I will bring the S3 bucket inside a VPC. Like you can do it with EC2 or Lambda. That is not possible. You cannot bring your S3 bucket inside a VPC. Okay, the next one is you do not want applications or other users to do HTTP access to your bucket objects. So HTTP means without the security layer, so the traffic in transit will not be encrypted. And you deny HTTP access via bucket policy. And I'm going to show that in the demo how to do that. And then one thing people are always talking about that the bucket object should be encrypted. Okay, here is the thing. If you think the bucket objects are unencrypted, you are wrong. That used to be the case. But however, after multiple incidents from the customer, now AWS by default encrypts the bucket objects with the S3 managed server side keys. So there is no such thing as unencrypted objects in the S3 bucket. However, you can also use AWS managed KMS or customer managed KMS where you bring your own key or newly released dual layer KMS to encrypt your object instead of S3 managed keys. So at this point, we are getting the idea what a good S3 security looks like. But at the end of the day, things happen, right? So 
you might have some bad event or you missed some security configurations because of which there was an issue. In that case, you need to implement monitor and audit. And of course, every time you hear monitor and audit, it's logging, so um, metrics, uh, application logging, infrastructure logging, candidates always say CloudWatch and CloudTrail. But remember, we need to delight the interviewer and the customer. You also should use AWS Config. AWS Config does continuous detection of S3 bucket policies or SEL. So if someone goes and tries to change the bucket policy or something else, it will detect it. And then it can also remediate it based on the events that you define if the S3 bucket configurations deviates from the one you have defined, you can trigger a Lambda and then with that Lambda, you can notify people, you can go fix it in the bucket policy or SCL, etc. All right, so at this point, we understood the different ways to protect the S3 bucket. So how does a good interview answer look like? So at this point, you can say, Mr. Interviewer, thank you for this question. And actually, I have implemented this in my last project. When it comes to securing S3 bucket and the objects, there are different layers of it. The attacks could be in different areas and to prevent that, I will implement defense in depth. So let's go one by one. First of all, I will block public access. And after that, I will enforce bucket policy to ensure only the AWS services or IAM roles can read from this bucket. When it comes to IAM roles, I will implement least privilege IAM role so the policies are not overly broad and it can only read specific S3 buckets. And if my application, which is running inside a VPC, interacting with S3, I will use VPC endpoint. And you can detail a little bit more. I don't want to repeat myself from the previous slide. I will deny HTTP transport via bucket policy. And currently by default, all S3 objects in the bucket are encrypted using S3 managed keys. Alternatively, I can use AWS Managed KMS or Customer Managed KMS or Dual Layer KMS, which is a new feature to implement server-side encryption in my bucket. And finally, the best practice is always to monitor and audit. And I can do that using CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and AWS Config, which notifies me in case the bucket configuration deviates from the one that I have created and also can remediate. Happy to answer any follow-up question. Boom. This is the kind of answer that you want to give to the interviewer or your customer in your real world projects to delight them. So now let's jump into the console and let me show you a quick demo. If you want to go one level deeper and get personally trained by me and crack top tech jobs like in AWS, Google, Microsoft, Reddit, JP Morgan Chase, CoreWeave, check out sabootcamp.com. I run few cohorts with limited number of students throughout the year. The next cohort is launching in January 2026. Go to sabootcamp.com to waitlist. And when you waitlist, I also send you a free cloud interview guide with many different cloud interview questions like this one with average answer and great answer for your study before the interview. All right, back to the video. All right, so I have this sample bucket named vulnerable bucket and it has this sensitive data like user password, database credential, customer database. So if I select this checkbox and click copy URL and just open up another page and press this, look, anyone in the internet without logging into anywhere can access this bucket. How do you stop that? So you go to the bucket, then go to the permissions. By default, block public access is turned off. So you click edit and then check mark this and then save changes, click confirm. All right, it is confirmed. But this doesn't stop a authenticated AWS user from reading this sensitive information. So if I open up a cloud shell and then I simply type AWS S3 CP and then um, dash. All right, so even though I'm a user, I can still see this. This is not good. How do I stop that? I stop that by enforcing a strict bucket policy. So if I make this smaller and then go back to my bucket, go back to the permissions. And to fix that, I need to implement a bucket policy like this. 
where I'm going to put my bucket name here and I'm going to deny everyone and everything except the application service. So in this case, I'm assuming my application is running inside a Lambda. So I need to put the Lambda role ARN here. If your application is running inside EC2, you will put the IAM role attached to the EC2. And then you will only allow access to your Lambda role or the EC2 role. Oftentimes, I hear this question that, but Raj, by default, everything is denied. So why are you putting this deny all? It's because you never know what policies are attached to what. Maybe someone logs in with administrator access or administrator role. In that case, that by default deny will not work. However, if you explicitly put this deny, then no one can access it except that AWS service. All right, so let me implement this bucket policy. All right, I go back to the bucket policy, click edit. I select everything, delete, paste, and then click save changes. All right, bucket policy is saved. So now let me try the previous command again to read that sensitive object from the bucket as a IAM user or IAM role of a user. All right, so let's press this. All right, so now we are, we are getting access denied 403. How about the Lambda role? Remember, this Lambda should have least privilege IAM role. So this Lambda has this S3 read policy specific to this bucket so that it cannot just go read any bucket within this AWS account. So with that, I'm nothing fancy with this Lambda. I'm just gonna go to test, click test, and then it's just executing the function. All right, so this Lambda can read the object in the bucket as intended. Couple of things remain. So one is the KMS part. So if I go to properties and scroll down, look, Default encryption, server-side encryption is automatically applied to new objects stored in the bucket. There is no way to turn that off. So never say that by default, S3 objects are encrypted and I'm going to implement KMS. So this is included in the S3 price. So this is to you, no additional cost. You can select server-side encryption with AWS KMS. So you can choose from AWS KMS keys that AWS gives or you can bring your own keys or you can encrypt using this new dual layer SSE. But for this demo, I'm going to keep this Amazon S3 managed keys, which is fine. Now, the tricky one is um, enforcing HTTPS. And you do that by adding this part in the bucket policy. Deny insecure transport, where you deny any insecure transport. So AWS colon secure transport, if it is false, that means it's coming through HTTP, then you deny it. And then once you implement this full bucket policy, your bucket is safe. All right, and I'm, I'm not going to show the config part and cultural CloudWatch part because that's pretty much obvious. And there are a couple of extra things that you could do, such as you can implement S3 object lock, so objects cannot be accidentally deleted. You can enable S3 versioning, so you can retrieve objects in case you updated or deleted something accidentally. And always you can do monitoring and auditing that the like I went over, that part I'm not showing in the demo. But as long as you mention three or four points from the one that I went over, you will delight the interviewer and the customer. All right, that's it for this one. If you like the video, click the like button, smash it if that's something you are into, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.